Man, these ceramic bearings are so expensive. How am I ever going to afford any? I'm already up to my eyeballs in debt after spending 6,000 quid on getting that guy with a beard to weld together 150 quid's worth of steel tubes and sell it to me as an artisan steel bike frame. If only there was a way to make money from bikes and, and then finally get the ceramic bearings that I so deserve and need. Hang on a minute. There is. So, how to make your own fake wheel company. Now, this is extremely simple, okay? Any fuckwit can do it, right? And many fuckwits have done this. To do this, you need to follow these very easy instructions from start to finish. And at the end of this video, if you follow it all the way through, you'll have your own fake wheel company making money for you, all right? Now, first of all, you need to assemble your equipment. Uh, the chances are you've probably got most of this already. Uh, the first thing you need is a computer. And when I say a computer, I mean a computer. I don't mean an iPhone. You need an actual computer, right? Now, laptops all right, desktops better. Next, you need an internet connection. Most of you've got that. The fact that you're watching this video probably means you've got one. So get your computer, turn it on. Then you need to install some software. The first thing you need is Skype. Install that. Next, you need to get, right, Photoshop and Illustrator. Uh, you can acquire these uh, using your initiative. Then you need to sign up for a PayPal account, and that's it. That's all you need. So to summarize then, you need a computer, an internet connection, Photoshop, Illustrator, Skype, and PayPal, all right? Once you've got those things, you're ready to go. So the first thing we need to do is to secure ourselves some wheels, all right? Now, the easiest way to do this is to go to Fastports, who basically supply everyone, and then get a quote on some wholesale wheels from them. Get 38 mil deep and 28 mil wide ones, all right? Get DT240S hubs and Sapim CX Ray spokes. Don't fuck about with these uh, cheap Jippo Chinese hubs because they will go wrong. And then basically you want to minimize the amount of uh, comeback you get from any of your customers, all right? You want to be able to sell these wheels and forget about them. Because any, any comeback, it means that you potentially lose money. Now, DT hubs don't go wrong, generally. S uh, Sapim CX Ray spokes are solid, and the rims will be all right. Okay, so get the Sapim CX Ray, DT Swiss hubs, and get the Chinese rims, all right? Um, get a quote for 10 sets, yeah, of 38 mil deep and 28 mil wide clinchers, carbon clinchers. Now, why do, why do we get 10 sets? Well, 10 sets is enough to sell and make a profit it's not loads that you're going to be stuck with them in case nobody wants to buy your wheels um, but it's enough to sell and make a profit it's a good amount to start with if it takes off you can start ordering more and you can start leveraging the amount that you buy to get discounts all right but 10 sets will give you a bit of leverage from fastports to get a discount so here you can see i've just logged into skype and i've started speaking to the fastports representative just said can you give me a quote on 10 wheel sets 38 mil deep 28 mil wide uh, clincher, CX Ray spokes, DT Swiss, 240 hubs, and I want to put my own logo on the wheels. And he's replied pretty much immediately after six minutes. So we very quickly just arranged this. This took 10, 20 minutes. After this, he sent me an email with a quote. Right, so here you can see the email that Fastport sent me about 20 minutes after we finished speaking on Skype. So let's just have a little look through and see what they're going to offer. So 10 sets of wheels to our spec, which is 38 mil deep, 28 mil wide, DT hub, Sapim CX Ray spokes, and they stick a, a 36 ratchet in the uh, DT hub as well, which is better than the standard 18 one. Look at this. Wholesale price for 10 sets, you're looking at uh, 7,520 US dollars, and that's their first offer before they we've even started negotiating. Bank fee, so I guess that's the PayPal fee we have to pay, uh, $20. Like I said, there's two sticker, sticker options there. The basic stickers are uh, 16 US dollars per set, or then there's the, uh, the water stickers, which is probably the best one to go for, which is slightly more. And there's a setup fee as well on the, uh, on, the, on the water sticker one, but that's all good. So you're looking at about, let's say conservatively, once we deal with all the, the, the setup of all the stickers and all that kind of thing, let's say $8,000. $8,000 for 10 wheels, 10 sets of wheels, right? So that's the front and rear. So that's $800 per wheel set. Right, so you got yourself a quote for 10 wheels. Next step is to design the branding that goes on it, all right? Now that's basically just your logo that goes on the wheels. So 
here's how you do it. Right, so this is how you design your wheel logos. First, make a little circle, drag it into the middle, make it a bit bigger, make the middle transparent, make the outline black, duplicate it, bring the size of the, in, the inner one down. So that's your rim on the screen there. Next, you type the name of your company. So we're gonna call it Install Wheels. Then just choose any fancy looking font, it don't matter. And make the logos black, all right? So you can have a black logo on a black carbon rim because that's what all the cool kids are doing nowadays. You don't have white logos on black rims anymore because that looks shit. You might have to Google how to, uh, <laughs> how to write text around a circle. Once you've decided on your font and your, your name and your logo, you need to write that around the wheel. So what you do is you just uh, you select the inner circle as the line which the, the font goes around and just type the name a couple of times. Bang spaces in between it to make it uh, spaced out around the rim. Delete the original one. There you go. That's your logo for your wheels. Save that off. Send it to Fastports. They'll make stickers for you. All right, that took one minute. Now, in that example, I used Photoshop. Now, depending on which wholesaler you use, they might ask you to use Illustrator. If you can get away with using whichever one you're comfortable with, that's cool. But yeah, keep your options open. So you send that logo off to Fastports. Now, there's two options for stickers. You can have the stickers that just stick on top of the, of the carbon that can be peeled off by the customer. Or you can have these water stickers, which are really thin, and they go underneath the, uh, the clear coat that they put on top of the rim. That's the better option. It's slightly more expensive, but it means that no one can scratch off the uh, logos without buggering up the surface of the carbon. So your company name stays safe forever. That's the one to go for. Next, we need to make ourselves a bit of web presence. So here, you need to sign up for a Bluehost account, which costs about $100 a year. Um, search the name of your company. Um, get a website, so I'm going to call it installwheels.com. That cost me $11.99. Buy that. Now, for your site, if you don't know how to install a website, um, you can pay somebody on Fiverr to do it for you. Getting a website built nowadays is, is pennies. The other guys who are doing this are using things like Shopify or Big Commerce to display the stuff on the website and, and sell the stuff on the website. So you'd have to do a little bit of research yourself, but something like Shopify or Big Commerce will allow you to do this. You can see here, yeah, there you go, Shopify and Big Commerce content delivery networks they're using. Uh, just check that out. I mean, like I say, you can you can just pay some kid on Fiverr to do it for you. It'll take him a couple of days. Get your website up and running. Right, the next step is to write your advertising bullshit. There's a bit of an art to this, but don't worry if you, you know, you're not good at writing or anything like that because uh, lucky for you, it's already been done for you. You might think that um, there's a lot of bullshit in cycling and there is a lot of bullshit in cycling, but that is nothing compared to the absolute load of complete bollocks that gets spouted in the hi-fi world. Honestly, it's astounding. And the absolute pinnacle of complete bullshit in the hi-fi world is the audio interconnects, all right? So what you're gonna do is, um, to save yourself the hassle of writing advertising shite, you are gonna go to the What Hi-Fi homepage, whathifi.com, and then you are gonna look at the reviews you're going to go to Hi-Fi, like we're doing here. Then you're going to go down to Accessories, Audio Interconnects, Analog. Then you're going to sort by price high to low, all right? So <laughs> 995 quid interconnect, yeah? Now, the stuff that gets written in these reviews of ridiculously expensive interconnects takes the fucking piss. Nothing comes close in terms of just over-the-top language and bigging something up that is, you know, clearly a bullshit product to start with. So instead of trying to write our own version of this, we're just going to use theirs because they are the kings of this. Now, what you're going to do is, quite simply, you're just going to copy all of that. Yeah, copy the entire review. Just, uh, there you go, click and drag, copy it. So what you're going to do is you are going to just steal this review um, and then you're going to transplant words related to your fantastic wheels onto it, okay? Using its general structure and general air of bullshit. So let's go. I'll let you watch this process and see uh, see how it's done. That's all there is to it, though, right? Don't waste any time writing anything yourself because it's already been done for you. 
Um, and you know the entire enterprise you're doing is, is just based on lies anyway so you might as well go the whole hog now don't worry if what you're writing doesn't really make sense because most of the people reading it don't care if it makes sense or not all they want is they want to feel that they're being slightly blinded by science they want to half understand it but they want to sort of half not understand it and then that makes them feel that like the, the thing that they're buying is technologically advanced all right so if, if it sort of doesn't make sense to you, that's probably a good thing. Um, as long as it's using lots of technical words and words that you know, maybe even you don't understand. And words that if you Google them, bring up a load of sort of scientific bullshit, um, that's good. Don't worry too much about grammar. Nobody cares. Nobody, nobody's looking at it. Okay, so we're done now. Let's, uh, let's have a little read through. Uh, we, we can fine tune this afterwards, but this is the general vibe. Under the right rider, these install wheels are brilliant. Building on the strengths of the original without losing anything in the process. We'll have to take that out because there's no original. The uncanny carbon layup elicits breathtaking resolution and dynamics when both laying down the power in a sprint and cadence sessioning your favourite post-coffee stop six percenter, whatever that means. Whilst being extremely light, they also belie, I'm not even sure if that's right, but let's leave it in there, impressive composure and authority, which is a sensation which usually only makes sense <laughs> in the highest of high-end wheel systems, but here it is on display with no shame. No shame indeed. Some people will never be able to get past install wheels hefty aerodynamics, but wind slicing though they are, used in the right setup, these hoops are extraordinary climbers too. All right, I mean, that doesn't really make sense either, does it? So that's good. Those with bikes below the five grand mark may be mistaken in think they shouldn't even think about getting them. Let's leave it like that. I mean, that that is wrong. Obviously, the grammar's wrong, but, you know, that these kind of wheels only really starts to make sense with systems around this figure. Again, grammar problem there. Let's just leave it in there. But they would be wrong. They would be wrong indeed. They are as dynamic, bold, and heck, even musical in a way that eludes most rivals. Yeah. Insta wheels will make you ride noticeably cleaner, unearthing even more subtle details in the surfaces you shimmer over along your route. The differences between your current wheels and these are of the night and day variety, and enough for the Insta wheels black carbon to keep you sitting on the cutting edge of high end velocity steeds. I think that's that that that's it really, isn't it? Um we could just copy and paste that onto the website. Now, when you write yours, and I say write, when you when you steal yours, you should try and um, aim for sort of a cross between a review of your own product being written by yourself on your website, a load of technical bollocks, a couple of grammar mistakes, and just sort of trying to make it seem like an aspirational good. Just copy and paste that onto the site as is, and then you're good to go. Right, so we are near the end now. Let's just recap on what we've done so far. First of all, you've set up your equipment. You, then you've got yourself a quote for 10 wheels. Then you used your newly acquired hooky software to design a lovely logo for your wheels. Then you've got yourself a website. You've put the shopping system into the website and filled it with complete bullshit about the product. Uh, so what's next? Well, next you need to start a bit of a buzz about it. And the way you do this is, of course, social networking. All right. So that means Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, yeah, and also uh, nerdy bike forums, right? So that's uh, slow twitch, weight weenies, all that sort of stuff. Now, the best advice here would be don't register on these forums as the company. Register as just some random guy and start, you know, dropping hints about this new wheel company that you've heard of or, you know, oh yeah, you've got these new wheels or you saw your friend riding this new set of wheels that look good and, you know, just sort of start it subtly and slowly build it up a little bit. If you go in hard, then they're going to suss you out and then it's just going to blow up like it did for, you know, a few people before. Um, the key is to sort of, you know, get yourself in there, you know, slide your way in there until you sort of, you know, become a regular. And then, you know, people start sort of seeing the name of your fake company around a bit more. And then, you know, they, they start to sort of develop a, a weird sense of trust, you know, through familiarity. From there, you may start taking a few orders. If you do, that's fantastic. But before you do that, of course, you need to work out how much you're going to charge. Looking at the other guys who are doing this at the moment, they're charging between $1,000 and $3,000 for these wheel sets with DT hubs. In fact, no, with the DT hubs, they're charging at least $2,000, two, two to $3,000. So let's say if it's $800 per wheel set and they're charging $2,000 
for the wheel set. That is $1,200 profit per wheel set. So if you order 10 sets, that's $12,000 profit. $12,000 profit on 10 items is fucking mental. Now let's take into account the setup costs. All the equipment, you've got it already, right? Just need a bit of time. The only thing you need to pay for really is your Bluehost account for $100. Some kid to program your website for you if you can't do that yourself. Maybe the Shopify system for your website. So probably, again, let's say really conservatively, um, let's say a $500 setup. Now the $7,520 that Fastport's quoted plus extras to get the wheels to you, you don't even need to get that up front. If you angle it properly with your borrowed What Hi-Fi review and make these things seem exclusive, you can take orders for the first 10, tell them it's gonna be a month before they get their wheels, get the 10 orders first, get the cash first, pay off Fastports, and then that they'll take a week to get them to you and then just send them out when they come to you. You don't even need to raise the capital up front. Piece of piss, anyone can do it. And then your very first order, you could be making $12,000 profit. In fact, you could even undercut the competition um, who are selling the same product. Undercut the competition or offer some sort, you know, free postage or something, which will, which will eat into your profits a little bit, but <laughs> you know. So let's really conservatively say $1,000 profit per wheel set. That's 10 wheel sets. You're still making 10 grand, $10,000. I mean, think how many ceramic bearings you can get for that. That's a lot. So probably once you've sold all 10 wheels, you'll have a, quite a bit of spare cash in your pocket. Uh, use that to order another 10 sets. And at this point, it would be wise to try and sort of hook up with some small boutique bike shops. Um, the way to do that is is just to sort of look around and see which, which of these boutique shops is selling other fake wheel companies approach them and say i've got these wheels you know i'll cut you in on the cut you in on the deal you obviously you have to take a loss on the on the profit but getting in with a few of these boutique bike shops would be good because um, that would validate your product ideally you'll have one you know in each in, in in variety of regions in the world so you know america a couple of european ones east asia uh australia new zealand if you, if you approach this properly and you you manage to get away with it for say five years you could probably make a million dollars.